All right, hey everyone, welcome back to the video for Python 2. Um, if you haven't gotten a chance to look at Python 1, definitely click through the playlist and just find it and look at it. Uh, if you just need to go over what the notebook or how to use the notebook, um, definitely click that video as well. It should be in the playlist somewhere. Um, but other than that, we're just gonna get into right into Python 2. In this notebook, we're gonna be covering some advanced data types, and this is gonna build on directly from your basic data types. So we'll be using things like strings, integers, floats, and boolean for this video. So if you need a refresher, definitely check that video out or just read through the notebook. So advanced data types. Now, these are more bigger things and more uh, complicated things than your basic data types. So these include lists or arrays, dictionaries, sets, and functions. Each of these has a really important role in Python, and you can use these for um, all your different code or all the different things you'll be doing throughout this camp and just whenever you use Python in general. So the first item in our list is a list. So I'm just gonna hand it right off to Kira and she's gonna be going over what a list, aka an array is. Uh, lists are very useful in Python um, and similar to a list in real life, a list in Python is basically just a collection of items and those items can be of any data type. It can be a boolean, integer, float, string, all of those work. And when you create a list, you want to make sure that you use square brackets, because if you do not use square brackets, you use a different type of brackets, then Python might confuse it for something else or it'll error. So you want to make sure that you want to use the square brackets. And inside of those brackets, you want to write down your item and make sure to separate them uh, with commas. For example, if you want to make a list of integers from one to five, you'd want to write Open bracket one, comma two, comma three, comma four, comma five, close bracket, and it'll have your list for you. Um, if you want to use that list of integers later on in your code, you want to make sure that you store it in a variable, and you can store it in a variable called for five ints. Um, and then when you write it down later on, it'll have that list that you made. Uh, like we said before, uh, this can have multiple different data types within it. Uh, so it can be a string, integer, boolean, float. It does not have to be only um, of one type. And then another useful thing to know about a list is how many items there are in a list. And you could use the built in length function for that. So all you have to write is length and then open parentheses the list or the variable containing the list and then end parentheses. And it'll tell you the length of the list. So four for a diverse list, which is correct, as you can see above, and then five for the first five ends, which is obviously correct because of the name. Um, and then one cool thing to note about lists is that you can actually put a list inside of a list. So here you can see that we created a list called inside list, and inside list are two items. The first item is the diverse list that we made above, and the second item is the first five ends. Um, so if you run it, you can see that inside list. Uh, the first item is that yeah is one list and then the second item is another one. If you do create a list, you probably want to make changes to it later on, um, further on in your code. And Python does give you the ability to add and remove values from your list. Um, so say you have a friend list with um, all the names of your friends, right? But you make a new friend and you want to add their name to your original list. There are two ways you could do it. You could use the dot append value. Um, and you basically just write friend list dot append and then the name of the value, um, in this case of Stephen. Uh, or you could create a new list um, of your friend's name, of the friend's name that you want to add to your original list and then use the plus sign. So here we want to add both Catherine and Adeline um, to our friend list. And you can see that, yeah, when you see what values are in our friend list, um, Stephen, Catherine, and Adeline have all been added at the end. Uh, one important thing to note is that if you want to add a list to your original list, um, if you use the plus um, sign way, you want to make sure that you add an extra set of brackets so it knows that you want to um, add the list, to add the entire list, and not just the individual elements inside of the list. So if you run that, then you can see that if you run it again and see inside from this, that the yeah that we add a list of Catherine and Adeline and not just the individual values. And then if you want to add a list using the dot append way, then yeah, you just like copy and paste that and put it in the time. Um, and then in addition to adding values, you can also delete values. 
Um, and you can just use the dot remove method. So you can send this dot remove and then make it send. Um, and then you'll see here, yeah. So Michelle is gone from where it used to be at the beginning and came in, yeah. It's moved up. So yeah, on to indexing. All right, so now we're going to go into indexing for Python list array and strings. So essentially, what is in, what is indexing? Um, indexing is all about extracting values from your list. Uh, let's say you want to get out a list or get a value from your array. Uh, you can use indexing to kind of just pull it out. So the biggest thing here, kind of just to show you like a visual, for let's say your address, you want to kind of go to a certain section if you know that your people are basically split by a letter. So for example, if, you have, if you're looking for me, you're going to go into the M section of your notebook and look for me in there. So that's kind of like what indexing is, except it's a little bit different in arrays and lists. <clears throat> so the first thing with indexing is bracket notation. So essentially you'll be using the square brackets uh, to index into your list. So I'm going to need to run the code from above. So just to quickly do that, I'm going to click here, press cell, and then run all above. So that's run everything. So now in my the first five ints array, let's just take a look at what that is. So that is this array right here from one to five. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to be indexing or picking out elements from there. So kind of with my bracket notation, I have it right after the name of the list. So I have my two square brackets and inside there I have a number. So real quick, let's just call the first five ints just so we have a reference here. So that's what my list looks like. And by indexing into it, I'm going to pick out the um, value that's at location number two. So you would think that one, two. So we're trying to pull out this value. Let's see if that actually is. And that is it. So we're pulling out the value three. So if you wanted to pull out the value two, you you'd need to write in one. And the reason why is because in Python, you index um, by one value off. Um, the reason for that is because of the memory of your computer and the Python language. Uh, that's kind of why it's set up that way. But essentially, if you want to get the first value in your array, you want to use index zero. If you want to get the second value, use index one. If you want to get the third value, use index location two. So it's going to be one off, one minus. So now, um, if I want to get the fifth value, that is the fifth object in my list, minus one, that's four, and I use that as my index into the list, and I get the value five from right there. So our bracket notation lets you go inside a list and pull out a value. So let's just look at what inside a list is. So inside list has two lists within it. So I use inside list zero to pull out the first li list, which is that. And then I'll bracket uh, notation into that. So I'll kind of go into that and pick out the third element as seen by the index two. And I do that and I get true, which is the third element at index value two. So you can also index into strings similarly. So if I have my name here and I want to index, uh, if I put a zero in the bracket notation, I'll get the first letter. So that is M. And then there's more indexing called slicing, where you could pick out slices of your string or slices of your list. And that works similarly to how we had the one off in the index from earlier. If I have my name and I bracket notate um, zero to three, that's going to pick off values zero to two. So locations, zero to two. Um, I still have three elements here, but the reason is, uh, even though there's a range of four, zero, one, two, three, so those are four numbers, but I'm only picking off three, and that's because the value after the colon is not included, it's excluded. So kind of remember that the first value is inclusive, second value is exclusive in a slice. And a slice is notated by a colon, 
and then you can kind of slice um, a string or an array that way. So now I have 0 to 4 here, so that means I'm going to get the 0, 1, 2, 3 located location um, uh, letters. So once I do that, I get MILA, which are the first four letters um, in my string at range location 0 to 4. Again, that doesn't include 4. And then check out the different ways you can um, basically slice. So those are three different mechanics there. And like I said, you can also slice with lists the same way you can slice with strings. So my first five ints, uh, let's just again pull that up, what that looks like. So I have one, two, three, four, five in the list. And I want to slice from zero to two. So that means I'm really picking out um, all the letters that fall in locations zero and one. So zero is my one, and then one is my value two. So once I slice into that, I get the first two elements and not the, the first three. Even though I'm specifying a two, I'm only going to get um, all the values not that don't include two, but include zero. And then for this one, um, if you already read this, it's kind of pretty much similar. But essentially what I'm telling Python to do here is um, two colon just means that give me everything at index location two and everything after that. So I didn't specify a value here at the end. So what, that, what that's going to do is just going to give me everything after 2. So I run that and I get 3, 4, 5. Which is indeed everything that is 2 and after that. At index location 2 and after that. So that means 3, 4, and 5. So that is the end of this video for Python 2. Um, I hope it kind of helped you guys clear out a little bit about indexing. And hopefully you learned a little bit more from it. Uh, definitely give it a like if uh, you like the video and definitely comment any feedback um, You guys have feedback with the notebook or just feedback with the video in general and um, The next video will be Python 2 part 2. So we'll see you there